Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's video what we're going to be doing is talking about saving and loading our models and then we're going to be doing a prediction on some data that doesn't come from this actual data set. Now I know this might seem kind of trivial, we already know how to do predictions, but trust me when I tell you this is a lot harder than it looks because if we're just taking in string data that means we have to actually do the encoding, all of the pre-processing, removing certain characters, making sure that that data looks the same as the data that our neural network is expecting, which in this case is a list of encoded numbers, right? Or of encoded words that is essentially just numbers. So what we're going to do to start is just save our model. So let's talk about that now. So up until this point, every time we've wanted to make a prediction, we've had to retrain the model. Now on small models like this, that's fine. You have to wait a minute, two minutes, but it's not very convenient when you have models that maybe take you days, weeks, months, years to train, right? So what you want to do is when you're done training the model, you want to save it, or sometimes you even want to save it like halfway through a training process. This is known as checkpointing the model so that you can go back and continue to train it later. Now in this video, we're just going to talk about saving the model once it's completely finished. But in future videos, when we have larger networks, we will talk about checkpointing and how you do, how to load your or train your model in like batches with different size data and all that. So what I'm going to start by doing is just actually bumping the vocabulary size of this model up to 88,000. Now, the reason I'm doing that is just because for our next exercise, which is going to be making predictions on outside data, we want to have as many words in our model as possible so that when it gets kind of some weirder words that aren't that common it knows what to do with them. Uh, so I've done a few tests and I noticed that with the, what do you call it, with the vocabulary size bumped up, it performs a little bit better. So we're going to do that. So anyways, we bumped the vocabulary size. And now after we train the model, we need to save it. Now to save the model, all we have to do is literally type the name of our model, in this case model, dot save, and then we give it a name, so in this case let's call it model dot h5. Now h5 is just like an extension that uh, means, uh, I don't know, it's like, it, I honestly don't know why they use h5, but <laughs> it's the extension for a saved model in Keras and TensorFlow, so we're just going to work with that. And that's as easy as this is. It is just going to save our model in binary data, which means we'll be able to read it in really quickly and use the model when we want to actually make predictions. So let's go ahead and run this now. And then we're going to have the model saved. And then from now on, we won't have to continually train the model when we want to make predictions. I'm going to say Python tutorial two, and I'll be right back once this finish, finishes running. All right, so the model is finished training. Notice that our accuracy is slightly lower than it was in the previous video. Really kind of a negligible difference here. Uh, but anyways, just notice that because we did bump the vocabulary size. So anyways, now that we've saved the model, we actually don't have to go through this tedious process every time we run the code of creating and training and fitting the model. And in fact, we don't actually need to save it as well either here to load our model in now that it's saved. And you can see the file right here with all this, uh, this big massive binary blob here, uh, all we have to do to load this in is just type one line. Now the line is whatever the name of your model is, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna call it model, is equal to, in this case, keras.models.load underscore model, and then here you just put the name of that file. So in this case, model.h5. Now, what's really nice about this as well is you can actually train a bunch of different models and tweak like hyper parameters of them and only save the best one. What I mean by that is like maybe you mess with, for example, the amount of neurons in the second activation layer uh, or something like that or in the second hidden layer. And then you train a bunch of models, you figure out which one has the highest accuracy and then you only save that one. That's nice as well. And that's something you could do like overnight. You could run like your script for a few hours, train a bunch of models, figure out which one is the best only save and then use that one. So anyways, we're going to load in this model. Notice that I've actually just commented out this aspect down here because we're not going to use this anymore. And now what we're going to start doing is actually training or testing the model on some outside data. So I've gone ahead and picked a movie review for one of my favorite movies. Some of you guys can read this if you want, uh, but it's The Lion King. Absolutely love that movie. So I've decided to go with this. This review was a 10 out of 10 review, so a positive review. And we're going to test our model on this one. Now, I actually did take this off like the IMDB website or whatever that's called. Um, but the data set that they use is different. So this is you guys will see why this works a little bit differently and what we have to do with this. So this is in a text file. So what I'm going to do is load in the text file here in code and then get that big blob, that string and convert it into a form that our model can actually use. So the first step to do this obviously is to get that string. So we're going to say with open. And in this case, I've called my file test.txt. 
and then I'm just gonna set the encoding because I was running into some issues here you guys probably don't have to do this I'm just gonna say UTF-8 which is just kind of the standard text encoding and we're gonna say as F now again the reason I use with is just because that means I don't have to close the file afterwards um, better practice if you want to use that and now I'm gonna say for line in F dot read lines which essentially just means we're gonna get each line in this case we only have one line but if we wanted to throw in a few more uh, reviews in here and do some predictions on those that would be very easy to do by just keeping this code structure just throw another line in there and now I'm just gonna say we're gonna grab this line and we're gonna start pre-processing it so that we can actually feed it to our model now notice that this when we read this in all we're gonna get is a large string but that's no good to us we actually need to convert this into an encoded uh, list of numbers right and essentially we need to say okay so of that's a word what number represents that put that in a list same with all same with the same with animation right and we keep going and keep going um, pretty well for all of the words in here and we also have to make sure that the size of our text is only at max 250 words because that's what we were using when we were training the data so it's expecting a size of that and if you give it something larger that's not going to work or it might but you're going to get a few errors with that so anyways the first step here is i'm going to say n line is equal to line dot and i'm going to remove a bunch of characters that i don't want so i'm just going to say dot replace I think this is the best way to do it, but maybe not. Um, and I'm going to replace all of the commas, all of the periods, all of the brackets, and all of the colons. And I'll talk about more why we want to do that in just one second. So we'll do dot replace. I guess this dot replace should probably be outside the bracket. Uh, and then we'll replace with a bracket with nothing. And I know this is there probably is a better way to do this, but for our purposes, it's not really that important. And finally, we will replace all our colons with nothing as well. Now, again, the reason I'm doing this is because, let's go here. If you have a look, for example, when we split this, because we're just going to split this data by um, spaces and to get all the words, what will end up happening is we're going to get words like company, comma. We're going to get words like, I'm trying to find something that has a period, like art, dot, and then a quotation mark, right? And we don't want those uh, to be words in our list because there's no mapping for art period there's only a mapping for art which means that i need to remove all of these kind of symbols so that when we split our data we get the correct words now there'll be a few times where the split doesn't work correctly but that's okay uh, as long as the majority of them are working well same thing with brackets right i can't have irons and then a closing bracket is one of my words so i need to get rid of that now this reminds me I need to remove quotation marks as well because they use quite a few of those in there. I don't know why I closed that document. Uh, so let's do that as well with one last replace. So say dot replace. In this case, we'll actually just do backslash quotation mark uh, and then again with nothing. Now I'm adding a dot strip here to get rid of that backslash n. And now we're going to say dot split. And in this case, we'll split out of space. Now I know this is a long line, uh, but that's all we need to do to remove everything. And now we actually need to encode and trim our data down to 250 words. So to encode our data, I'm going to say encode equals in this case, uh, and we're just literally, we'll make a function called like review underscore encode and we'll pass in our end line. Now what review encode will do is look up the mappings for all of the words and return to us an encoded list and then finally what we're going to do and we'll create this function in just a second don't worry it doesn't already exist is we're actually going to use what we've done up here with this test data train data care as pre-processing stuff and we're just going to apply this to in this case our encoded data so we add those pad tags or we trim it down to what it needs to be so in this case we'll say encode equals keras dot preprocessing instead of train data we'll just pass in this case actually a list and then encode inside it because that's what it's expecting uh, to get a list of lists all right so now that we've done that uh, our final step would be to use the model to actually make a prediction so we're going to say model dot predict and then in this case we'll pass it simply this encode right here which will be in the correct form now we'll save that under predict uh, and then what we'll do is just simply print out the model. So we'll say print or not the model. Sorry We'll print the original text, which will be the review. So in this case, we'll print line and Then we will print out the encoded review just so we can have a look at what that is And then finally we will print the prediction So what whether the model thinks it's positive or negative So we'll just say predict and in this case, we'll just put zero because we're only going to be doing um, Like one at a time, right? 
Okay, sweet. So now the last thing that we need to do is just simply write this review encode function and then we'll be good to go and start actually using our model. So I'm just going to say define review underscore encode. This is going to take a string. We'll just call that S uh, lowercase s. And what we're going to do in here is set up a new list that we're going to append some stuff into. So I'm just going to say like return, uh, let's just say like encoded equals and then I'm going to start this with one. Now, the reason I start one in here is because all of our data here uh, where it starts has a one. So we're just going to start with one uh, because we won't have added that in from uh, the other way. I hope you guys understand that. Just we're setting like a starting tag to be consistent with the rest of them. And now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through every single word that's in our S here, which will be passed in as a list of words. We'll look up the numbers associated with those words and add them into this encoded list. So we're going to say for word. And in this case, we're going to say word in S. Now we will say if word in this case, word underscore index. And again, we're going to use word underscore index as opposed to reverse word index because word index stores all of the words corresponding to the letters or not the letters, the numbers, which means that we can literally just throw our data into word index and it'll give us the uh, number associated with each of those words. So we're going to say if word in word index, then we'll say encoded dot append. And in this case, we'll simply append in this case, word index word. Now, otherwise, what we'll do is we'll say encoded dot append to now what will happen is we're going to check here if word if the word is actually in our vocabulary, which is represented by word index, which is just a dictionary of all the words corresponding to all the numbers that represent those words. Now, if it's not, what we'll do is we'll add in that unknown tag so that the program knows that this is an unknown word. Otherwise, we'll simply add the number associated with that word. Now, one last thing to do is actually just do word dot lower here just to make sure that if we get any words that have some weird capitalization, um, they are still found in our vocabulary. So like words at the beginning of a sentence and stuff like that. Uh, and now with that being done, I believe we're actually finished and ready to run this code. So what's nice about this is now that we've saved the model, we don't have to train it again. So I can literally just run this and it should happen fairly quickly. Fingers crossed. Let's see. All right, must be a list of iterables found non iterable object. So what error is that here? Uh, encode, 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 encode. All right, so print review encode. Ah, well, it would be helpful if I returned <laughs> the encoded list. And that would have been our issue there. So let's run that one more time and see what we're getting there. And there we go. Sweet. So this is actually the review. I know it's very, really hard to read here, but if you guys want to go ahead and read it, feel free. Since it's on the Lion King, it's obviously a positive review. And then you can see this is what we've ended up with. So our review has been translated into this, which means we've actually trimmed quite a bit of the review. And you can see that wherever it says two, that is actually a word that we didn't know or that wasn't in our vocabulary. Four represents the, that's why there's a lot of fours. And then all the other words have their correspondence, right? Uh, now, fortunately for us, we picked a 88,000 vocabulary, which means that we can get indexes like 20,000, whereas before it would have all been under 10,000. And you can see that our prediction here is now 96% um, positive, which means that obviously like we were going between zero, where zero is uh, a negative review and one is a positive review. So this classified correctly as very positive review. And we could try this on all other kinds of reviews and see what we get. But that is how you go about kind of transforming your data into the form that the network expects. And that's where I'm trying to get you guys at right now is to understand that, yes, it's really easy when we're doing it with um, this kind of data that just comes in like IMDB, like Kara's low data. But as soon as you actually have to start using your own data, there's a quite a bit of manipulation that you have to do and things that you might not think about when you're actually feeding it to the network. And in most cases, you can probably be sure that your network is not actually the thing that's happening incorrectly, but it's the data that you're feeding it is not in the correct form. Um, and it can be tricky to figure out what's wrong with that data. So with that being said, that has been it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's gonna wrap up the text classification aspect here of neural networks. I'm thinking about either going into uh, convolutional neural networks, which is image processing, which is really interesting, or the kind of game playing neural networks in the next few videos. Please let me know what you guys want in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to accommodate that.